I am Dr. Rajesh Kadia, consultant physician at the KM Hospital, Pune. This is the second video of mine in a series of three videos. The first was the modes of transmission of the coronavirus. The, today, I'll be talking about the clinical features of coronavirus. And the next, the most important will be the prevention of you from getting the coronavirus. What, uh, where, uh, what happened in the first and between the second video was we suddenly had an increasing number of patients, hundreds of new patients in India. Then something else happened was there was huge migration of laborers, laborers from one state to another state all over, all over India. And this is not good. The prime minister, the central government and the state government had clearly issued directives for a lockdown. Then what were the people doing outside their homes? We were supposed to stay home. Please be worried. Earlier it was the coronavirus had come to our country. Now we are in a world of corona. We are in their world. And the, please respect that virus because that is what I'm going to enumerate what this virus can do. Then comes to what are the clinical features of when I'm talking of coronavirus, we have to understand there were some modes of transmission which I discussed in the last video, which I said was the first mode of transmission is the droplets when a person coughs and second was the droplets on the surfaces and then you touch the surface and touch your face and you can get the virus. So what are this, when we say that we get the virus means there has to be a contact. So which are the contacts who are most likely to get the virus? Where do you come in contact with the coronavirus patients? One was when you're treating a coronavirus patients or you're looking after a coronavirus patient. Two is wherein you're in a gathering. That's why gatherings had to be avoided, have to be avoided. Or you are in a room with where there's another positive patient or unknowingly there's a positive patient over there or in your office, in schools, in colleges, or even at your homes, as I said. Second is when you're traveling with somebody who's got fever and cough and a suspected coronavirus patient. So you're also a contact of that patient. Fortunately, the government has locked down all these services, bus and trains and planes. Now, when a person gets a coronavirus, does it mean that uh, he gets the fever on the same evening or the same day? No. In a medical science, there is something known as an incubation period. So when a person first gets the infection, and from the point of getting the infection to getting the fever, there's a period of 2 to 14 days. Average, they said that normally a person gets fever within 5 to 6 days after getting the infection. Average timing, but it can be up to 14 days. That's why the government said that all patients, all contacts have to be quarantined for 14 days. So once the quarantine period is over, they don't get a fever, that means they're free of the disease. What are the main features of then we come to the next is what are the main features of this coronavirus infection? So three main features we should all remember is mild to moderate disease, severe disease and critical disease. Now, what is a mild to moderate disease? Now, mild to moderate disease is seen in 80% of the patients. So all the 80% will have a mild flu like symptoms. It's not really much. They'll have fever, they'll have cough, 80% of the patients. 40% of the patients will have body ache, lethargic feeling, tiredness. Some will have headache, some will have sore throat, some will have loose motion, some will have vomiting. A uh, very important subtle sign is that not many patients with coronavirus have a sneezing or a cold. So they don't get a cold, that is more common with flu. So that gives you a direction that if they have a cold with headache and flu and cough, that means it can be a flu. So this is overall the 80% of the patients. Then there are some around, uh, say we say around 14% who can get a severe disease. So when you say severe disease means that they start getting a pneumonia and the patient becomes breathless. So he becomes breathless, his respiratory rate goes above 30, his oxygen saturation drops to below 90, his PO2, FiO2 goes to less than 300. And the X-ray, the most important, shows that 50% of the X-ray is filled with pneumonias. So when you get a pneumonia with the 50% x rays involved and these are the features, that means the patient has got a severe disease. This, as I said, is seen in 14% of the patients. Then comes the critical stage. Now this critical phase or stage, you see in 5% of the patients. Here the patient goes into multi-organ failure. That means he goes into ARDS, he's on a ventilator, he's got renal failure, he can, he's in shock and the death rate is high in this phase. So, they say that 2 to 0.2.5 to 5 percent of the patients with critical disease will die. Now, uh, this that means out of 100 patients of coronavirus, around 2.5 to 5 per 5 patients will die in this 
infection. Now, who are the patients who are most likely to die? Now, there is a concept that fine, that we should look after these patients well. One is all those above 65 years of age. Then there are the comorbidities like diabetes, those with heart disease, those with lung disease, those with kidney disease, those with uh, immunosuppressive therapy like steroids, and those with uh, you know cancer patients. So they are most likely to get coronavirus infection. Death is very common in these patients. So these patients have to be well isolated. Don't let them come to work. Please look after your parents. Please isolate them. See that nobody visits them. That's very important. And if you can do that, let them not be near any coronavirus patients or any patients with fever and cough. Once that is done, you have to understand what is going to happen as the numbers keep increasing. And we go over uh, maybe over the next one or two months, you'll have hundreds of new patients. Is the hospital, all the hospitals capable of accommodating all these patients? No. So 80% of these patients can be treated at home. All those patients with fever and cough should be at home. They should be quarantined at home. They should be in a separate room. They should not be in touch with the other people at their residence. They should not go down for a walk or something. They should be given food right at their doorstep. They should have a bath in the room and be in that room for 14 days. This is known as home quarantine. So they'll be at home. They can be treated at home. Only around 20% are going to become bad. That's the 20% who's is going to go into severe and critical disease. These are the people who will go into the hospital. Please try and understand. I am a physician at a hospital, but I know the crisis. If these numbers, if we admit every patient with a mild disease in the hospital, the hospital will not have enough beds to accommodate all these patients. So let us, over a period of days and months, we will have to reserve these beds only for the critical patients only. After this, we have to know that once we have discussed all these features and of a, a coronavirus, we come to the phase key to understand key what can be the next future. Now I have discussed key what is a mild to moderate disease. I have discussed which is a severe disease and critical disease. What is the future? What is going to happen now? Henceforth, Corona, as you remember, 10 years ago, we had an epidemic of uh, influenza in India. I remember those days where every room literally had an influenza patient. The ICU beds were full. There were times when I remember there were no place in any ICU in our city where there were large number of influenza patients with ARDS. We just didn't know what to do. Over a period of time, over a few months, this disease died off. Some of them got a herd immunity, some of them may immunize, and some develop swine flu and they may immunize automatically. Even now, is it, even now, influenza has become endemic to India. We yet see a few cases of influenza and swine flu every month. Same way I foresee for Corona. Over the next few months, the disease is going to escalate and then it will die off. It will die off for natural death. Most of us may have, may get mild symptoms or moderate symptoms. Some of them will get into herd immunity and obviously the vaccine will come out in due time. Once the vaccine is out, Corona will be wiped out. So we pray to God that the vaccine comes out soon. I, uh, I yet feel that what then should be the main features how, of what we should do right now till that Till we all develop this herd immunity or till that we get vaccinated, please be at home. Please be safe. Please be happy. Please wash your hands and look after your hands. Sanitize your hands. Because the whole management of Corona is your own hands now. Thank you very much.